Hello Warband Enthusiasts! Welcome back on this fine new day. Timmy here. I've lately been enjoying playing some Total Conversion single player mods for Mountain Blade Warband, thoroughly enjoying myself and helping lessen the unceasing desire for Bannerlord. Total Conversion mods provide essentially a whole new game. Assuming you enjoy single player Warband, you will love these Total Conversion mods. This list is opinionated based on what I personally enjoy best, but in the future, I may expand the list to include ones not mentioned. First off, we have Bellum Imperii. This mod is an absolutely massive ancient Roman total conversion mod. Having close to 30 factions on a map replicating Europe during the reign of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, the mod is unfortunately though still an alpha, having a fair amount of bugs and lack of feature completion, as well as the primary developer saying further development is on hold until further notice. Yet, there is still a massive amount of content as it is. Freelancer and diplomacy are included in this mod, as well as sea travel and warfare. There's additionally land owning and money lending, death cam, fatigue, and stamina, building of forts and outposts, religion, and much, much more. Unfortunately, I experienced crashing uncommonly and various bugs. Additionally, battles and the campaign map are often laggy. Nonetheless, though, it is a must play for any fan of the Roman time period, an experience that is on a massive scale and hard to match. Next up, we have the Star Wars Conquest mod. Set in the Star Wars universe, you have close to a dozen different races to choose from, but a meager three factions to join during the Galactic Civil War. Originally developed for the first Mountain Blade and released in 2010, the mod has since been ported to Warband and gained much popularity for its vastly different setting from both Vanilla Warband and other mods alike. Created in part by the team of the last days of the Third Age, it is well made, introducing many unique mechanics and gameplay. Laser guns, lightsabers, tavern brawls, upgrading and purchase of your spaceship, bank loans, and speeder bikes, Star Wars Conquest brings much to the table. Core gameplay of fiefs and, ca and conquest of castles and cities still exists, and the player can create their own faction should they desire. The game has everything a Mountain Blade and Star Wars enthusiast could want. Easter eggs and crossovers from the Star Wars universe of other games and movies are prevalent, truly making a vibrant and realistic world. Well, as much as you can, in the Mountain Blade engine at least. There are occasionally bugs, and some battles are laggy, but otherwise it is fairly good technically speaking. Personally not my favorite, as it is not my favorite theme, but with how incredible of a mod it is, it could not be forgotten. In the third position, Gekko Kujo is a total conversion mod set in ancient feudal Japan during the Sengoku period on a full-scale replica map of Japan. A mix of both fiction and history, Gekko Kujo has a fantastic mix that creates a beautiful blend of gameplay. Both Diplomacy and Freelancer are once again included in Gekko Kujo. There is a diverse array of new weapons, armor, units, and troop trees, and new content added. A total of 32 towns, 75 castles, and an astounding 164 villages make this more than just another game. Gunpowder-based weapons and units are included too, which is a big plus for myself personally. The game is well polished and has had the majority of its bugs hammered out, however, it is no longer being worked on by the developer and is fully released in that sense. Optimization is fantastic. Leg is uncommon on the massive campaign map and large battles usually are manageable. Playability level is on the same level, if not more so, than Mountain Blade, although initial loading times are significantly longer based on the sheer scale of the game. If you are a fan of Japanese type games and like games like Total War Shogun 2, you'll love Gekko Kujo. Next to last, we have Suvar Nabuhumi Mahoyuth, titled as SM from now on for reasons you hopefully may understand. A total conversion mod set in 16th century Southeast Asia. Once again, a blend of history and fiction, this mod lets you learn much of the geography and names of the time period as you fight between 12 different historical factions on the map. There are firearms, hand cannons, rideable elephants, and even a rare grenade weapon. Freelancer and diplomacy are both included, and there are sea battles as well. War cries and battle cries also add an interesting aspect to the game through an improved battle morale system, and there is an overlaid real-time mini-map of the battle as you fight. Troops can be put into formations and ranks too. The mod is incredibly polished. I never once experienced any major bugs or problems in my close to 100 hours of playthrough. It is additionally well optimized. Large battles run smoothly, and despite the action going on in the massive map, it too still runs well. It was the first total conversion mod I played and a fantastic introduction to these types of mods. However, disappointing myself when I found out that other total conversion mods were in general not on the same level as SM. The diversity of units and factions add great replayability, and I found myself sucked in on multiple occasions to get addicted for hours upon hours into a new campaign, on a map that is absolutely bustling with things to do and activity all throughout. 
a gem that anyone can find some enjoyment in that I heartily recommend. Finally, we have The Last Days of the Third Age, a total conversion mod of Warband into the Lord of the Rings universe by J.R.R. Tolkien. Substantially different from any other mod or vanilla gameplay, DLD strives for a unique but addictive gameplay experience. You'll either love it or hate it. I personally adored it though. Say goodbye to a common currency and say hello to resource points and influence points. In a sense, forcing you to explore the world and help every faction. You can fight as one of several different races for either evil or good, following a rough timeline of the Lord of the Rings movies, progressing the story in that manner, and having a proper ending. Released originally for Mountain Blade and then ported to Warband, this mod has aged considerably well since its 2011 release. Characters can optionally die permanently in battle, adding an increased feel of accomplishment or dread as the game progresses. Replayability is amazing, with a minimum of being able to play twice, once for the good guys and once for the bad, and many times more for the various races. Bugs are minor to non-existent, and the game still receives patches on a regular and often basis. Optimization is also quite good. Whether you are a fan of Tolkien's universe or not, The Last Days of the Third Age is a great mod, and if you are a fan, you will have the time of your life. Thank you guys so much for staying as long as you have. This concludes my list of some of my all-time favorite Warband Tolkien conversion mods. Have you played any of these mods? All of them? Do you think you will now? Let me know in the comments. If you're new, consider subscribing. I do game giveaways at every major subscriber milestone and make Bandalord, Warband, and other PC gaming related videos. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you again so much. I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the big massive world we call home.